What's going on guys, Robert Sala met with the media today at the owners meetings down in Arizona. And here are my five biggest takeaways. Now the full interview has not been released. I've just compiled a bunch of tweets from the Jets beat. So if you appreciate me saving you some time on Twitter, a thumbs up is an easy way to show it. And if you're new here, you like talking about the Jets, go ahead and subscribe. Number one, mom on Aaron Rodgers, kind of. Now Robert Sala couldn't go into too much detail on Aaron because he's still part of another team and we can't get into some tampering business before this trade goes through. But here is a takeaway from Mitch, Rich Samini on Twitter, quote, without directly commenting on the Jets' interest in Rodgers, Sala makes it clear they're all in and willing to wait it out. As he noted, he's not hitting the panic button. Some posturing involved here, of course, all part of negotiations, unquote. Takeaway number two is that number two, Zach Wilson will be quarterback two. A direct quote from Sala, he's our QB two. Now, my first thought is, in an ideal world, I'd like a more experienced uh, backup you can rely on. Somebody like Teddy Bridgewater is still out there. But those guys run you six to eight million bucks. And if you look around the NFL landscape, the teams with the best backup quarterbacks have starting quarterbacks that are either young and unproven or get hurt all the time. And the Jets don't have one of those, once, or they won't, once Aaron Rodgers is officially a Jet. So right now you're looking at guys like Brian Hoyer bringing in. Uh, I've always felt that a coaching staff worth their salt probably can take the number two overall pick and turn him into a decent backup. But after what we saw last year, I would have preferred a veteran starter who can be more consistent and come in, but not the end of the world that Zach Wilson is quarterback number two, in my opinion. My takeaway number three is that Robert Sala was emphatic that he prefers Carl Lawson remain a New York Jet. Quote, uh, I have to ask Joe about that, but pass rushers don't grow on trees. So as long as he can walk and play, he'll be here. Unquote. Uh, I like Carl Lawson to stay. I'd like him to take a haircut on that $15 million if it means an extension or or a restructure. But the Jets' strength last year was depth and relentless, relentlessness via the pass rush. They were also very healthy on the defensive side of the ball last year, which is not necessarily a guarantee. And I think Carl Lawson, two years removed from the Achilles, uh, should be able to bounce back. I don't think he looked like a $15 million player last year. He did in 2020. Hopefully we could at least get somewhere in the middle. And that's still a very valuable player on this team. Takeaway number four, uh, similar to Carl Lawson, Corey Davis has been a potential cap casualty. We've been discussing it for quite some time. Robert Sala went out of his way. This is per Zach Rosenblatt. Uh, quote, went out of his way to mention Corey Davis as if he was still a part of the plan on offense. Obviously that would change if they add another wide receiver, but seems like they want to try and keep him, unquote. Uh, I believe Salah on Lawson. I don't know if I believe him that much on Corey Davis. I do think this is a little bit of posturing because I think Corey Davis is not only a cut candidate, but a trade candidate. Yes, all it takes is one GM who has a young quarterback they want to support to pay up a sixth-round pick to bring in Corey Davis on a one-year rental. There's a GM in the league, I'm sure, that would do that. Or maybe he's thrown in there in the Aaron Rodgers trade because the Packers just lost Lazard. The Jets place replace Corey Davis with Lazard. Maybe the Packers replace Lazard with Corey Davis. If they do sign Odell Beckham Jr., which I've made it clear I'm not a huge fan of, but if they do do it, fine. But I don't see you paying Corey Davis $11 million to be what, your wide receiver for? Um, so I think most likely he's not a Jet by the start of the season. And takeaway number five is that the Jets are not in on Ezekiel Elliott. When asked about it, Robert Sala said, quote, we like our running back room the way it is. I'll leave it at that, unquote. Also adding that Mecole Hardman brings gas, speed, electricity to this Jets offense. So those are my five biggest takeaways from Robert Sala's meeting. Uh, we'll talk about down below why this week is huge for an Aaron Rodgers Jets potential trade and some other important timelines of note. I'll see you down there in that one, and we'll talk ball soon. Hold up.